All right, so that's the digging bit done. And that whole process was just rough. It doesn't matter as long as I'm inside the lines. So I've still got my gauge lines on all of them. Um, and now I'm gonna show you really a nice little trick. Now this trick tends to favor certain size joints. Basically, you've gotta be able to come in from both sides. So it's very good for centralized joints. Um, really good for like, kitchen cupboard doors, stuff like that, when you just need to get it established. And basically what I'm gonna do is use the router plate. Now, this might seem a little bit strange. Now, if I just get this roughly set so you can see what the plan is. So what I'm basically going to do is come in from above and just scratch it out as deep as the, the plane will let me. So I've probably got the best part three quarters of an inch on that, maybe a little bit more of depth that I can go. So I'll go into there and I'll flip the piece, do the same again, same depth of cut. And by doing it like that, you're always making sure it's central. Now the fact is you're not going to get deep because you're limited before you hit here. Okay, so that's your depth that you're limited. But what you're going to get is this absolute perfectly parallel and smooth three quarters of an inch or so that's cut out. And then you can put your chisel on that and purr the rest out. And these are like machine grade mortises once you get doing this. It's a bit of a procedure. It's like an extra job to do. So I'd only ever do it on jobs that really pay, because most of the time you can get away with a rough mortise. But for a job like this, this is a, this is a superb way of really fettling your mortises. So what I'll do is I'll do one joint at a time, but I keep flipping it every time I make a setting so the joint remains central. I don't care if they're all a little bit different because each of the tenons will be fettled to suit. So I'll do a couple here just in my normal procedure so you can see what my setup's like. And I'll do one on the other side of the bench because I think that's the only way you're really going to get to see inside what's going on. So something thin to act as a backstop. When you see this done, um, you'll probably agree with me that there's probably a bit of a gap in the market for a tool dedicated for this. You know, some sort of, I mean, you could probably just make a modification to one of these, some sort of long nosed bloody router cutter. That'd be really handy. Right, so I've set that to just below my depth. Basically, just using it as a router plane. So I'll finish this one off, and you'll see it.
inch more for that one. It's a bit tatty still because you can see where all my crumbs are and it's gone in a good three quarters of an inch but you can see how perfectly flat and smooth it is. So there'll be a bit of fettling. see into there so what I'll be able to do now is reference my chisel on that flat face and just pair out the remainder <laughs> 